These three siblings were living alone after both parents died of Ebola. Their village rejected them. Vandenik says it can be hard to find surviving family. Of course, Ebola is wiping out entire families because the contamination inside the family is the highest. A mother kissing her child, a father taking his daughter in his arms, taking care of the grandparents. In western Sierra Leone, Africa, more than 20 people every day die from Ebola. The numbers are rising. The conditions are appalling. And those on scene say if the world does not step up and fast, the result could be catastrophic. Yet one region in that country remained Ebola-free until just recently, when its first cases were diagnosed. How they did it, the challenges they faced, are now front and center. Welcome to Midpoint from Sierra Leone. The executive director of Fambul Talk, an organization dedicated to advancing peace in war-torn communities such as Sierra Leone. John Cocker joins us today. John, thank you so much for being here. Thank you here for having me. John, recently your district, the district you're in, Koina Dugu, had been untouched by Ebola. Recently, though, two Ebola cases in the district were found. That had to be tremendously disheartening to you. But did you also fear that, simply put, the disease is so ravenous that it was going to happen sooner or later, that this was a battle that you just might lose? Um, we were actually taken by surprise because we were not expecting that the disease will um, come into Quenadugu because of all the preventive measures we took earlier. And the whole process was more of proactive community mobilization, which started from way back in June to ensure that the community are actively involved in being um, as part of the preventive measures to make sure Ebola does not come to Quenadugu. But unfortunately, it is there now and the cases are increasing. As of today, do not officially reported, but, but we are now talking of about five victims in the district. So you're now up to five victims because we originally had heard two, correct? Yes, we now have about three. Uh, it has not been officially announced, but the only nurse, the only healthcare worker in the particular section, the village, is now uh, a victim, including her husband and the porter in the hospital, the, the health center because it, it, was, uh, it is a health center in a small community, so it is really unfortunate. And we are now really trying to do our best to address the situation immediately. Why were you and your group able to hold Ebola out of the district for so long? And if you were so successful, John, why did others in surrounding regions not at least try to copy what you were doing and try to shut down the disease? Um, is it Initially, when the Ebola virus broke out in Conakry, Guinea, there was a high level of denial, uh, both at government and community level. Um, so when it entered Kailau through Guinea, Kwenadugu took the first step to make sure that because of the terrain, it's a mountainous area, um, the borders are porous, we took the initiative to say, okay, let us be proactive to prevent Ebola from coming to the district. So checkpoints were um, erected immediately, way back in June, when the government was actually not taking any action. So it was more of a community proactive measure that, that prevented Ebola in the community. And also the initiative of one philanthropist, Momo Conte, who initiated the task force right at, a, at an early stage to combat the um, disease. And all of us became part of the, the process as organizations, as community stakeholders, as tribal leaders, um, religious leaders, we all join the process to make sure Kwena Dugu remains Ebola free. Unfortunately, I mean, we've been defeated. John, I have long. about 30, 40 seconds, then we're going to take a break, come back, and we'll have more questions. But at this point, was it the government who simply wouldn't listen? Were they simply the ones that got in your way and hurt your ability? to stop this disease? Well, the government did not provide all the necessary logistics because um, it's, I mean, the, the government will argue, they will argue that they don't have the resources, but I, I will add that the government and the international community did not come to the aid of Kwenadugu at an early, uh, early enough to prevent this. Unfortunately, 
Uh, not only Queen Adugubo, but the whole country. Okay. Hold on just a few minutes, John, because we're going to be right back with you when we return with John Cocker from Sierra Leone. How this district managed to escape the plague, what America might be able to learn from it, and also the international community reaction that is desperately needed. And later on this hour, a letter to the president about veterans training and a positive about the future for our military veterans. That and so much more coming up right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.